Anaplasmosis is a common cattle disease we see here in Oklahoma and really this entire region of the United States. Many producers are going to be familiar with the clinical signs. It's caused by a rickettsial bacteria that invades the red blood cells of the cow. That leads to anemia, jaundice, weakness, inappetence. We can also see abortions related to these infections as well as retained placentas and even in severe cases, death. The challenge with this disease is once these cows are infected, they're infected for life and remain carriers. They serve as sources of infection for those that have not been exposed yet. We do have antimicrobial treatments, antibiotics that can be prescribed by a veterinarian to address the initial infection. However, they will not eliminate the carrier status. We don't have any approved medications here in the United States currently available to eliminate the carrier status. So it becomes important for producers to be aware of the disease. If we are going to, if we see signs that could be consistent with anaplasmosis and we want to either sample those animals, which testing is done on a blood test, and or treat those animals, we need to be cautious when we're handling them. Because remember, they are anemic, they can be weak, and just the stress of handling can uh, tip them over into really a serious, serious situation. Once we go to diagnosis, OSU researchers continue to work on this disease, um, even working on a shoot side test that they're working to become commercially available. If a producer is not sure that they have anaplasmosis in their herd, it's important to work with their veterinarian to develop a plan of addressing this potential disease. We want to make sure new introductions are tested prior to arrival in case they have not been exposed previously. We also want to take other biosecurity measures like handling animals carefully, making sure we're not introducing those new introductions right off. We want to make sure we're not reusing equipment such as needles from animal to animal, which can also spread the disease. It's transmitted primarily by ticks, but we can also see transmission with biting flies. And again, we as humans can mechanically transmit the disease through common equipment. We routinely see bovine anaplasmosis in Oklahoma and this region. However, in other parts of the United States, they are beginning to see a similar infection caused by Tyleria. Tyleria causes similar signs and is coordinated with a relatively new tick we're seeing in the U.S., the Asian longhorn tick. So if you're suspecting anaplasmosis, it may be worth discussing with your veterinarian if you want to test for anaplas as well as Tyleria too. For more information on bovine anaplasmosis, please visit the SUNUP website.